In the course of centuries, great historical cities have always been recognized by their familiar and captivating skylines. The panorama of the ancient Riga facing the Dalgora River displays the time-honored church spires which have been towering high above the roofs of the surrounding houses ever since the early 13th century. The weightier of the dominant elements resembling an ancient helmet with the figure of a rooster as the symbol of the eternal vigilance of Christian faith belongs to the Riga Dome. The construction of the Riga Dome, the seat of Riga's bishops, later archbishops, was started in 1211 with the blessing of Albert, the first bishop of Riga. It is the time when the outgoing Romanesque is replaced by the modern and restless Gothic. The Riga Dome, like many medieval cathedrals, was built continuously over several centuries, preserving or securing, changing or totally modernizing certain parts of the edifice. All styles represented in our country have left their traces in the dome, from the Romanesque and Gothic in the basic construction of the church to the late 19th century Art Nouveau in the interior. Time has erased the names of the church builders, but it is obvious that the magnificent Baltic medieval monument has been built by outstanding masters of the time. This is why the Riga Dome has survived eight centuries and even today this stately witness of the distant past breathes security and shelter to anyone who comes in the walls of the weighty and austerely beautiful architecture. In the 16th century, after the victory of Reformation in Riga, the dome turned from the Catholic Archbishop's Cathedral into one of the city's Lutheran churches, with a Puritan interior befitting the new faith. Almost nothing has survived from the ornate furnishings of the Catholic period. The central part of the Lutheran church, too, is the altar, made in the late 19th century, after the design of Wilhelm Neumann, a Baltic German art historian and architect. The Gothicized forms of the Oakwood altar are richly decorated with wood carvings. In the center of the altar, the eye rests on a gilded cross in a mandola. On both sides, there are four skillfully made figures of the evangelist. Xavier, the stained glass window made in the workshop of Carlert and Weber in Riga, performs also the function of the altarpiece with the welcoming words from the Gospel by Matthew. 
Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Stained glass windows play a significant role in the aesthetic perception of the Gothic cathedrals. Their sparking colors fill the aesthetic plainness of the space with life, lending the indispensable mystic tinge. The Riga Dome got its stained glass decoration in the late 19th century. The funds for these windows were raised by rich patrician families of Riga. The coats of arms of the donors inserted in the windows bear evidence of this fact. In the north side apertures of the eastern transept, there are two stained glass windows made in the glass painting workshop of Ernst Torder in Riga. The narrative scenes from the life of St. Martin and the life of St. George have been depicted in rhythmically chained rosettes to the full height of the window. The figural medallions were a masterful imitation of the medieval stained glass technique which creates an impression of antiquity. The four stained glass windows of the northern apertures of the Riga Dome were made in the Royal Stained Glass Workshop in Munich after the designs by Anton Dietrich, painter of the historical genre. This cycle of stained glass windows gives an insight in the uh, cultural history of Riga. The first in this cycle is the stained glass window Madonna with the infant Jesus. The image of Mary with worshippers near her performs both the requiem function, popular in Christian iconography, and serves as a link to the donor's name, Maria Czesdecka. The second stained glass window in St. Anne's, or the Bride Chapel, is thematically related to the origin of the Dome Church. In the center of a six-figure composition is Bishop Albert, dressed in a purple pluvial. On the 25th of July, 1211, he laid the foundation stone of the Dome Church. The unknown architect of the Dome, the craftsmen and the builders are depicted in impressively gathered burghers' clothes fashionable in the 13th century. The first stained glass window in the neighboring Burgomaster Eckes Chapel was intended for the remembrance of the great reformer Martin Luther. The stained glass depicts the moment when Walter von Plettenberg, master of the Livonian order, declares freedom of faith in Riga on the 21st of September 
1525. The concluding window of the cycle reveals an event which thematically may be described as the delegation of Riga greeting the Swedish King Gustavus Adolphus on the 25th of September 1621. This is one of the most beautiful Riga dome stained glass windows at which visitors willingly linger. However, the event as a historical fact hides a tragic trait in the faith of Riga. The city has always been a covetable lump for all aggressors who have reached out for the Riga port and the rich arable lands of Livonia. The ancient tombstones and plaques are the oldest monuments in the Riga Dome. The tradition to bury the deceased under the cathedral floor originated in the early Middle Ages. At first, these were the clergymen and secular persons of high rank. With time, especially after the Reformation, also the wealthier house owners. In the course of centuries, the plaques have changed possessors more than once. The church sold the burial place for 30 years ahead. If nobody of three successive generations showed interest in their ancestors, the burial place was sold to the next owner. The old texts and ornaments were chiseled off and new names were cut in the stone. Epitaphs, memorials to the deceased, present a peculiar kind of memorial monuments. Epitaphs could be, for a certain price, fixed on the walls or pillars of the church. The oldest epitaphs from the early 17th century are carved in stone, displaying a rich polychrome decor with the biblical themes as their central elements. These are scenes from crucifixion, resurrection and ascension ornated by lavish bunches of fruit and winged herms. The barbaric repairs at the end of the 18th century wiped out fantastic art values of the Riga Dome. All mural and vault paintings were destroyed. Many of the stone epitaphs were erased or whitewashed.
Since the mid-17th century, the epitaphs became especially popular as they were made of wood and in difference from the stone epitaphs were of secular character. The principal accent was the magnificent and diverse family coats of arms of inexhaustible variety. The memorial texts in German convey to us the dates of life of the deceased, also his merits or his lands. The wooden epitaphs display the contemporary European passion for heraldry. Though many of them have been destroyed, there still is a considerable number of such epitaphs in the dome, serving to our day as a reminder of outstanding or influential persons in the history of the church and the city. An outstanding sample of wood carving in the Riga Dome is the pulpit which was donated to the church in 1641 by a member of the Riga Town Council, Ludwig Hintelmann. The pulpit was made by one of the leading Livonian artisans, Tobias Heinze, the wood carver at the Duke of Courland Court. The pulpit of the Riga Dome is the biggest in Latvia, thus testifying to the scope of the master and the customer. Carved in wood are the biblical images, Christ, John the Baptist, the apostles, the evangelists, allegories of virtues and angels. Each figure lives its own life. Together though, they create a rich ensemble, well fitting in the dome interior.
19th century, the Riga Dome gained world fame by its new organ made by the Ludwigsburg company Volker & Co. The sound of 6,718 coordinated pipes was manipulated by a many-voiced choir of registers, as many as 124 voices. This was an unprecedented height of tone and range of overtones. The biggest and the most modern, these were the epithets describing the excellence of the dome organ 100 years ago. The beautiful Mannerist organ front was preserved from the previous organ built in the 16th century. The outstanding Dresden organist Karl August Fischer more than 100 years ago wrote about the dome organ. Last autumn I had a lucky chance to play the big Valker organ at two concerts. This magnificent instrument makes me think of a masterly tended garden full of flowers from different countries which would give a friendly smile to the bright sun as well as to thunderstorms and tempest.